Support for this podcast comes from the law firm of Davis Malm. Whether you're a developer, property owner, manager, or commercial tenant, their real estate attorneys know the lay of the land, not just the law. Learn more at davismalm.com. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. As we settle into 2024, we know a lot of you are starting off the year with dry January. That's where folks abstain from drinking alcohol for the first month of the year. Now, whether you're observing or not, some of you probably want to cut back or give up booze altogether, if you haven't already. Wherever you are on that spectrum, you might be looking for some non-alcoholic beverages to sip on, which is why we wanted to check out Dre, Boston's first non-alcoholic bottle shop. It's located in the South End and opened in November, so it's pretty new. We headed to the shop to meet up with Dre owner Pat Dooling to learn more about different non-alcoholic beverages to help make your dry January or beyond a little smoother. Pat met us at the door and welcomed us into the shop. Yeah, kind of industrial with the, uh, yeah, the old back I mean, pipes um, and got the big mural in the back. Exactly. We just tried to create a fun space. I mean, it is as like tended to be a community gathering space. It's mm-hmm. like I get asked all the time, like, well, couldn't this just be like an online business or something? And yeah. like there are those, but I think the whole point of this is to bring community together. It's a bright open space lined with shelves of non-alcoholic beverages for sale. The product's all categorized basically like if you were in a high-end liquor store, right? So got beers over here. That whole wall down there is spirits and spirit alternatives um, and mixers. And then that wall is more kind of ready-to-drink, kind of pre-mixed type stuff and, uh, and wines. I asked Pat, who are the people coming into Dre? He told me, of course, there are a lot of people who are sober, but that's not the whole picture. The majority of our customers still drink. They also want to reduce, right? So a lot of people, um, whether it's, hey, I drink, but I used to drink five nights a week, I want to drink two. Or, hey, I want my alcohol percentage to be less in my drink. So I don't, it's not like every drink is as strong. People will come in here and they, um, they'll mix, right? And spirits is a good example of that. Like people will come in and get a non-alcoholic bourbon, right? do one ounce of the regular bourbon, one ounce of the non-alcoholic, and all of a sudden you have a drink that's half the alcohol percentage. So there's a lot of people kind of playing around with the category that, you know, it's not all about just stopping. Pat leads us over to a large island in the center of the shop where he and another employee, Camila, have laid out a variety of drink-making materials. Pat, who says he's not a big fan of the term mocktail, pulls out a shaker and prepares to walk us through how to make one of the team's favorite cocktails with a non-alcoholic spin. Fun one we like, we serve this at a lot of events, is called a French 75, um, which uh, in the regular uh, cocktailing world is, is popular. It's kind of a, in the category of like almost like a champagne cocktail. It's fun. It's, it's light, it's refreshing. This, this is the type of thing where people are often astonished that, you know, in a cocktail form, they can get to something that sort of has the experience they're looking for. So we'll start off. We're going to do a little bit of shaking to start. So get some ice in the shaker. Here you're trying to get kind of that, you know, bitter intensity of the gin, the citrus, balance it with a hint of sweetness, and then go with that sparkling bubble on top. So we're going to start with one of our gins here. This is... um, this is the Ritual Gin. Um, we also love the Dios Gin is another a variety we use sometimes. Uh, has a little more juniper to it. The nice thing, part about this cocktail too is that you don't even have to have a non-alcoholic gin. I would recommend a non-alcoholic spirit of some kind, uh, your favorite one. So if gin is not your favorite one, you could work with a number of other brands on the market. Typically we'd pour in, you know, depending on your preference, anywhere from one to two ounces uh, of gin. We'll kind of go with the, the sort of in-betweener of about an ounce and a half. Gin in. Um, fresh lemon juice, important here. Um, again, you can kind of do it to taste. I'm kind of a, of a measured by the size of the lemon kind of thing. So I like to do about a half lemon. 
We balance that with a hint of sweetness. So this is a simple syrup. This is one you can make at home. Uh, so if you can't get simple syrup, you can basically boil down water and sugar. Um, I like my own simple syrup. Yeah. So I'm going to do about a half ounce with this guy. Um, I'm not a huge sweet fan, so I like it more on the citrusy side. And with that, we've got the shaken part of our cocktail all done and ready to go. Nice classic shake, chilled well. Pour that into our glasses. And the last element, because this is a sparkling cocktail, is uh, a non-alcoholic sparkling wine. This is an odd bird, uh, Blanc de Blanc, also incredible on its own. Um, it's out of Germany. It's a beautiful example of a sparkling wine. Any non-alcoholic sparkling is going to do well. And frankly, even if you had to, you could go soda water or tonic. Changes the profile of the cocktail a little bit from French 75, but it's still good. So we're going to top with... Maybe about not quite equal measures of that in the glass. Give that just a quick stir. You want to, this part, once you have the sparkling in, you don't want to stir too vigorously to get the bubbles out. So it's, it's nice and crisp and clean, refreshing. And that's our non alcoholic French 75. Here we go. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Got a little bit of the juniper. It's funky. Around. I kind of like the funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink the whole thing. So listen, that was very good. And great party drink. So. Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Did you kill Marlene Johnson? I think you're one of the first people to have actually asked. From WBUR and ZSP Media, this is Beyond All Repair, a new podcast about an unsolved murder that will leave you questioning everything. Somebody should be in jail for murdering my sister. A woman who's never been believed. As long as they think I have done this, then they're not looking for who actually did this. And that's what makes it a cold case. No, it's a botched case. And a search for the truth, once and for all. Wow, it just gets more interesting. Beyond All Repair. Listen and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Be careful. You're digging in a place that's been very peaceful for a while. Do it anyway. Dig. And we're back from Dre in Boston's South End. After sipping a delicious French 75, I wanted to learn more about what inspired Pat Dooling to open this first-of-its-kind business in Boston. So I think the short version of the story is it's, it's a combination of kind of like, like something deeply personal to me and, uh, and a, what I think is a really serious professional and business opportunity. The personal side of things, I quit drinking a little over two years ago. Um, it was a fantastic choice in my life. Um, I'm a totally sober guy. It was something I felt like I needed to do. Obviously, whenever something that profound happens, it causes you to think about a lot of things. And it just so happened I was at the same time in my career where I was starting to poke around doing something different. It was fortuitous timing because I think to the second big topic around the business opportunity and, and the business case here, it was right at a time where this market started booming. You know, you're in yeah. Boston. This is a city yeah. that is city famous for drinking, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you see things going here? Because yeah. you're the first, right? Yeah, I mean, we're a city of drinking for sure, but we're also a city of pretty uh, dynamic and rapid change. Um, and so I think while we might not be the first to this, um, we can move real quick. And I think. Part of its link, right? That, that idea of a younger population, a more educated yes, population. You know, we, we talk to college age kids all the time in here, and uh, they, they and their friends are drinking less. There's just no, whether it's data or it's anecdotal, they're drinking less. And so I think that population will naturally drive change. But I also think we're a city full of like, you know, the right industries for it, you, you know, things like healthcare, technology, things where people are educated and care about what they're putting in their body. Mm. You know, another thing I'm thinking about with alcohol is 
there's the social aspect of uh, the connection part yeah. of it, right? Sure. Uh, say, when you want to meet up with a friend, hey, let's go get a yeah. drink, let's go get a beer. Yeah. Or how do you see that playing out with the non-alcoholic movement? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we think the celebration revolves around that relationship, you and your buddy, the fun you're having and what you're doing. And, you know, we think the celebration uh, can be just as good with our products and the specialness can still be there with our products. I think it, it, it you know, our ultimate mission is to get people to think about life doesn't revolve around what's in the bottle. It revolves around everything else outside of that. That's part of the cultural norm we're combating that alcohol is everywhere. And our choices have a long way to go to get as prevalent, but we think they're just as celebratory and, and fun. So. so we're in dry January. People, they want to drink less uh, for this month at least. How's it been? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wild, I would say. It's uh, above expectations. You know, people were coming in here around uh, Christmas, around uh, the start of the new year, and Everyone was like, has it been busy holiday season? And I said, our holiday season has not started yet. <laughs> January is our month-long Super Bowl. So we'll sleep in February. Let's put it that way. So if somebody wants to stop drinking or just slow down a little bit, um, what type of products or advice even would you offer them? Yeah, I mean, I think on the advice side first, I, I guess I would say um, community first. So really make it a thing that you're not doing alone. Let people in on that. Let people help you. Chances are... If you talk to enough people around you, someone else has tried the same thing or wants to at the same time, even better. So there's partnerships. So second thing I say is I do like the idea of taking a break, you know, and your break could be defined however you want it. Maybe it's a day, maybe it's a month, maybe it's a year. And then related to that, you know, don't beat yourself up if you don't hit it. You know, really take that break as a time to evaluate what's going well, what's not, how do you feel, you know, and product side, Look, we're interested in selling you products, um, but I would say whatever makes you feel most at ease during that time period, maybe it's none of our products. Maybe your first step needs to be stay away from all this stuff entirely. On the, the alternative is a lot of people talk about the concept of just having something in your hand at all times that's not an alcoholic drink because it gives you something to reach for when you do have that sort of natural uh, reaction to, to, to pick up a drink. What I tell people, people ask about dry January's business, and it's like, dry January's great. We'll be there in February. We'll be there in March. We'll be there in December. You can do it anytime, and we can support your journey through the rest of the year. That was Pat Dooling, owner of Dre. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Common. If you like what you're hearing, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts, especially Apple or Spotify. Rate and review us. Let us know how you're liking the show. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common or send us an email at the common at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I will talk to you tomorrow.